Israeli engineers Kafir Damari and Jonathan Weintraub. It's absolutely spectacular. With front row tickets to the launch, they're two of the three brains behind the daring moonshot. This is where they actually launch the Apollo landers. So I bet like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, you know, might go for a run around here. We are a bit sad on the fact that we are actually going to say goodbye to Bear Ship. I, I actually did not realize it's three hours before launch right now. Uh, wow. Um. <laughs> the third engineer behind the spacecraft is Yariv Bash. He's watching the launch from Mission Control in Israel. I just went to the uh, launch room, you know, everybody is to the Mission Control Center, everybody is quite excited. <laughs> I like the, uh, the commotion here, all the, uh, the people who've worked on the project. Public viewing areas are crammed, the audience gripped by moon fever. So many people here, you can tell how proud are we, are we as space, a spacecraft will go to the moon. The world is also watching this incredible rookie lunar mission. This is the first private mission to the moon. It has never been done. The springboard to this audacious moonshot is the 2007 launch of the Google Lunar X Prize. Today we're challenging private teams from around the world to design and build robotic explorers and race them to the surface of the moon. Google was incentivizing teams to be innovative in lowering the cost and to open the doors to space. The contest challenges amateurs to build a spacecraft able to cope with a vigorous launch, the harsh vacuum of space, and a tricky moon landing. Technology has advanced remarkably since the Apollo era. Now it's no longer superpowers that are able to do this, it's even amateurs in some cases. That doesn't mean that space has gotten any easier though. In late 2010, Yariv, Kafir and Jonathan meet in a pub to take up the challenge. Three engineers walk into a bar, come up with the design of a spaceship. When we got started, we thought that we'd be able to do that in two to three years. Unfortunately, it's been taking almost a decade now. I didn't have the expertise in space engineering. Even today, it's so complex that you need so many people. These are the original sketches of their spacecraft that the three space novices make. You can design a spacecraft on your own, but you need experts to make it work. The guys need specialist engineers and facilities to build the craft. So they strike a deal with satellite experts Israel Aerospace Industries. Without us, it would never take off. Uh, without them, we would never have the audacity to do it. There's another hurdle. Moonshots cost serious money. The three dreamers need a backer. A nice guy comes to us and says, do you have any money? We said, basically, no. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. You come to my office and I'll give you $100,000. I never seen so many zeros. Team Space IL is born. It immediately registers as an educational not-for-profit to attract private donors. I love their ambition. I love their lack of fear. Little did I know that they'd made their calculations on the back of an envelope. Good evening from SpaceX headquarters. We're currently at T minus 10 and a half minutes until launch. All systems are go. Eight years later, with a final price tag of $100 million, the spaceship is ready to launch. If Space IL as a private company can put something on the moon, other entrepreneurs will dream about following in their footsteps. It's a whole new ballgame. It's the moment of reckoning. Bereshit is balanced on top of 500 tons of rocket fuel. And that doesn't always end well. Putting your expensive, fragile, beloved piece of equipment on top of a rocket that's sending it off of planet Earth. Rockets have blown up on the launch pad or shortly after launching. It is definitely still a concern. Now, 
It's Bereshit's turn. Falcon 9 is in startup. Go for launch. 10, 9. You truly believe that we have a real shot at the moon? But we still need to cross our fingers. Two, one, zero, ignition. The solids ignite and it's just explosion and the vehicle just Little bitty satellite like Bear Sheet, the vibration itself is gonna test all of its connections and all that stuff, so it won't feel real good. Less than three minutes after launch, and Bereshit is already 80 kilometers above Earth. But she's not alone. In another first for a lunar lander, she's riding shotgun on top of two satellites. Having the SpaceX rocket to herself would cost $60 million. But this rideshare cuts the price to $20 million. Bereshit is going on an Uber. I can get a cheaper ride. What the heck? Every million counts. All this removes the cost significantly to something that a nonprofit can actually fund. Every other mission to the moon has had its own rocket. This is the very first that's taken a rideshare, but I don't think it will be the last. This revolutionary springboard to the moon creates new challenges for Bereshit's engineering team. The spacecraft must eject safely from the SpaceX rocket. 